Hello everybody, welcome to another very exciting tutorial. This one is the third in the series of uh, the carousel effect. So in the first two episodes we talked about how to create like a, a sort of a sliding carousel. In the second, se second episode we talked about how to make it infinite or circular. And today we're gonna build a fade effect for the carousel. So just to show you how it works, uh, basically we have the same uh, markup as the previous tutorial, if I press next, you'll see that it fades out and into the second one, third one, fourth one, and so forth. And then you can go back, you have a fading effect. The fading effect obviously works well if you have a background for your section, either as a sort of a background for your section, as in like CSS background, or you know, an image tag within your section. Uh, otherwise, I mean, you can get some sort of a good feeling, but in this like in this case, I had to add some background color so that you can really see the effect, right? So now let's get started. Uh, just uh, for the sake of time, I'm going to copy the HTML that we had. I'm going to create a new uh, prototype in the online code editor that we have and paste it. So it looks something like this. Uh, also, because of the arrows are coming from the material icons, uh, I already have an import. Uh, let me go here and copy the material here. Uh, the way I do it, I'm just going to import URL and then paste that. So now we, you see that we have our sort of um, le uh, left or right or next and prev. So let's go ahead and style it a little bit. I know that I have a container. I'm just going to width, set the width to uh, maybe something like 80% and then give it a margin 20 pixel and auto from right and left. Uh, then we have our carousel, right? So the carousel, uh, let's, let's give, the, give the container a height of 400 pixel as well. So the carousel itself that we have in our markup and let me switch to this layout so you can see them side by side. So just going to remove this for now. So we have a container which I styled over here and then we have carousel. I'm going to set the width to be 100 pixel, height to be 100 pixel as well, and then set the border to be 2 pixel solid and maybe CCC. So this is the boundary of our carousel going to give it a border radius of 3 pixel as well. So, so far so good. Next thing I'm going to do is because uh, I have a slider as a child for the carousel, uh, I'm just going to set the slider width to be 100 pixel and height also to be 100 pixel. Now in the previous tutorial, I would set the display for the slider to be flex, but for the case of fading, I don't really need to do that. What I'm going to do is instead I'm going to style my sections to be position absolute, all of them, and then top zero, left zero, and then a width of 100 pixel and a height of 100 pixel. Right? The reason why the content went out is because my carousel needs to have positioning defined on it explicitly, whether it's position relative or absolute, depending on your case. So now we have our sections just to center the text a little bit. I'm going to set the display to be flex for my sections and then justify content to be center and then align items to be center as well. Right. So now you can see that since all my sections are positioned absolute, they're going to end up one on top of the other. And of course, the order uh, that they have is based on the, 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 the order they have in the HTML. So the fifth one, since it's the last in this uh, sort of uh, sections array, it's going to end up right in front. So if I go ahead and give a background like FFF to the sections, let me save this prototype. You already saw that section five will be the one that is visible. So now the trick to make the fading work is that um, I would set the opacity for all the sections to zero, right? So opacity zero. 
The next thing I want to do is set the Z index, which defines the ordering of the elements when they are positioned, you know, in this way, to be zero as well. So all of them now have opacity zero and Z index zero. Now for the, f I want to show the first ones first, right? So I'm just going to go ahead and say slider section and then using nth child pseudo element i'm going to set the opacity to be one and then z index to be one as well so now you will notice that all all the sections have opacity zero z index zero but the first one has opacity one and a z index bigger than the rest of the sections right so now you can see that it works now in my javascript i'm just going to open this a little bit more I need to have a reference to my uh, sliders pretty much uh, sorry not the sliders but the sections so I'm just going to say const sections equal to document query selector all and then uh, well obviously I don't need this maybe so since we have a next and for uh, next and prev button let me go ahead and style those as well so we have a button with class next and then we have a button with class prev and within that we have our material icons so now i'm just going to say um, next button so the button with class next i want the position to be absolute and then i want the top to be 50 percent and then i want the from the right to be 10 pixel and uh, this is our next uh, and also for the prev I want it to be also position absolute top 50% and then left 10 pixel and the reason why they don't show up because they are also position absolute and we define the Z index on the first section to have the Z index 1 by default these ones that do not have Z index are defaulted to zero. So I have to actually give them a Z index more than uh, the one that I have on the section one. So I'm just going to say two here. So now we have the next and the prev, all good. You can go ahead and style them a little bit more if you want to remove the background and everything. Uh, for the sake of this tutorial, I'm not going to do that. So now what I need to do is have a reference in my JavaScript to the next, uh, to the prev and next button. I'm just going to define a constant, call it next. It's going to be document dot query dot query selector. And then I just say next. And then I'm going to copy this and call this one prev. And we're going to change it to pre. Now I'm going to add an event listener to the next, which is click. So when I click it, the second argument will be the function that does what we want it to do. So what I would like to do is basically when I click next, I want the same thing that I defined here for the first child to happen for the second child. But also I want to reset the first one to uh, z index 0 and opacity 0. So what I need to do, I just need to say, well, I need to have a reference to the slider. So I need to have a reference to this slider so that I can choose its children. So I'm just going to say slider document dot query selector. And then I would just say slider. And then I would do slider dot children. Well, I have to define a variable called section index. This represents the selected one or the one that is like uh, showing here right now. The index is zero based on the JavaScript indexing. So sec this section one is actually having index zero. And then what I would like to do is just increase that section index when I click the next. So section index plus one. And then I just say slider children section index dot style dot opacity to become one but also before that i want the z index to be one as well right so now everything looks good so now you can see that if i press next supposedly it will change the styles over here 
but also I want to reset the style on the one that was previously visible here to zero, right? So for now, I'm just going to create a function, call it reset, and then just for the ease, I'm just going to go ahead and define a for loop for i or var i equals to zero, i less than slider dot children dot length i plus plus, and then I just say slider dot children of the index in that loop dot style dot opacity to be zero, and then I'm copying the same thing and also set the z index to be zero. Right. So now if I click next, you can see that it instantly make, gets to be two, three, four. Right. And then if I press continue, it goes five and then it is nothing else to go for now. But now uh, what I, in order to add the fading effect, what I need to do is that for the sliders, since the opacity changes, I can say transition all and the transition, basically the fade duration that you want. So if I put, for example, three seconds, it's going to be three seconds. So now if I start pressing next, you'll see that there, there is sort of a fade effect that is happening over here, right? Just to showcase it better. And that's what I told you in the beginning of this. It's not really visible unless I go ahead and define like a, uh, background color. So if I just copy the slider for nth child 1 and say I want the nth child 2 to have the background of let's say tomato and then the third one to have a background of blue violet, blue violet. Uh, just just bit now if I press next you'll you actually see the fading effect that happens between these uh, these sections, right? Now if I go forward, because I have defined the transition to be all, you can also set it to only opacity, because you're literally changing opacity here in these transitions, but you can also choose all, it doesn't matter. So if I go ahead, I can get to section 5. Now if I press again, nothing happens, right? And then I can go back and nothing happens because we also need to add the same code or logic for the prev button. But instead, uh, we have to set the index to minus one because we go back and then the rest is the same. But also one of the important things is that when we press next and prev, we have to actually call our reset functions before the reset function that resets the opacity and z index for all the sections to be zero right yeah. so now i call the reset function over here now see what happens if i press next i go to section two all good section three again with the opacity of three seconds section four all good section five as well now if i press next you'll see that it just vanishes because there is no other section after five so we have to actually fix that we know that there are five elements or five sections that we have here so whenever i press next i would need to make sure that if the section index let me just make it a little bit bigger so if the section index is less than the length of the sections which is 5 minus 1 which then becomes 4 if section index is less than 4 go ahead and increase my section index by 1 that's exactly what I want otherwise if it becomes 4 or upwards I want to actually set it to 4 so I'm using a ternary operations here by the way you don't really need these parentheses because there's only one condition that you're checking here the same way I want to do for the prev so when I press on the prev I want to decrease the section index by minus one until it reaches to the zero one otherwise I don't want to change it so I would say section index is more than zero go ahead and uh, decrease it otherwise set it to zero right I'm going to remove these parentheses again because they are not needed now, if you notice, I'm going to also change the transition to be a little bit faster. So we don't need to wait three seconds every time we switch. So section two, 
section 3, section 4, section 5. And now if I continue, you know, continue pressing this, nothing happens because that's the condition that we are actually setting here. Now I can easily go, go back 4, 3, 2, 1. And then if I press all the way, nothing happens. Perfect. So this is really how to create a fading effect. Uh, wasn't that simple? This is probably the simplest one because the last two tutorials, uh, they were dealing with like flex, display, and you know, the ordering, and you know, a little bit of like knowing what exactly is happening. But for, for fading, it was pretty much really simple just to set all the sections to have positioning absolute and playing with the opacity and Z index and get the effect that you want. So I hope you enjoyed tutorial. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please go ahead and do. In the next tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to actually create sort of some sort of an auto slide so that you don't need to like press next or previous. It's more for like sliding shows and stuff. So stay tuned. I wish you have a good day and night and see you tomorrow. Goodbye.